Hello, it's Rebecca from Precious Pages Papercraft and today I am designing for Petri Cup files using this Walking in a Winter Wonderland file and this layout is for our January online crop. So here is the timetable for you. I am challenge number four and I have a recipe challenge for you today. So I'm asking you to create a layout using any Petri Cup file of your choice but I'm asking you to include some of my favorite techniques and elements. So I'd like you to add a border to your layout, add some thread or stitching, add some stars, distress some edges and add Nouveau, enamel drops, gems or sequins. So that is my recipe and I'm going to show you how my layout came together using those five elements. So as well as cutting the Winter Wonderland cut file, I've also cut the icicles and I cut it twice because I was really undecided at first whether I wanted to use the dark navy basil version or the patterned paper version. So um, I've cut the Winter Wonderland and the icicles in a, it's a dark navy textured basil. Um, and I'm going to back the letters of my Winter Wonderland with a patterned paper from the Echo Park Winter Magic collection. And it's a gorgeous patterned paper with snowflakes all over it and it's got kind of an ombre effect going on. So I'm cutting it at the top of the paper so that winter is kind of the lighter shade of blue. And then as you move down to Wonderland, um, as the paper goes down, it gets darker. So that should have a nice effect on my background. I'm just going to try and cut it in two sections. So I'll have that W on its own. And then the rest of the letters I'm going to cut as one piece just to make it easier to back it. So there is my cut file backed and I've placed for now the dark navy icicles underneath just because I'm marking out with a pencil where my cut file will sit so that I can add some mixed media. So my background cardstock for this layout is a white textured basil cardstock and I'm going to be using my Cosmic Shimmer iridescent watercolour paints. So I'm just adding some water to the pots there to activate them and uh, I haven't put any gesso on my background at all. So all I'm doing is uh, watering the paint down and then adding splatters directly to the background and then just using a piece of packaging to smush it down. I'm making sure I leave lots of white space in between my splatters um, because I'm going to add different colours and I want each individual colour to show. Um, and I haven't used the gesso because I'm not adding a lot of water to my background at all and I'm not really fussed about um, moving the colours around on the page. I'm happy to just have them where they land and I'm just smushing them a little bit. So um, the colours I'm using, the first blue I used, the darker blue, is called Midnight Blue. Then I've used Persian Sea and then I'm adding a tiny bit of kind of like a purpley colour there. That one is called Lavender Shine. Um, and I've added that one because in my photo, you can actually see a tiny bit of a kind of purple shine. So I've brought that one in as well. And then I've also got, um, that one is just called Silver. And the last one is called Pearlescent. So I love how all these colours look together. Um, they really complement my photo well, which is of my little boy in um, our local garden centre do like a winter wonderland walk every year. And they very kindly let us go in on our own at lunchtime when there was nobody else in there. So we had the whole place to ourselves, so it was brilliant. Now these paints, um, as the name suggests, they're iridescent and they're cosmic shimmer. So they are really, really shimmery. Um, you'll see it better in the close-ups. I've finally made a decision with the icicles. I'm going to have my patterned paper icicles on top and I'm going to kind of stagger them on top of the um, darker navy one to give a shadow effect. 
Now this is where I come in with my distressed edges. So this is one way to distress your edges. Um, I am using a distress ink pad in, uh, I think that's called Blueprint Sketch, that one, and an ink blending tool. And I'm going all around the edge of my cut file, distressing the edges with a bit of color. Um, so that is one way of distressing your edges. I'll also add some um, distressed edges with my scissor blade. So the white cardstock, you'll notice I've trimmed it down and I've distressed all the edges of that with the side of the blade on my scissors. So I've got two different types of distressed edges on this layout. Obviously I've got a piece of patterned paper cut there as well that I'm using as a border for my page. So that's two of my recipe pieces and I'm now coming in with number three which is to add nouveau drops. Now I'm not adding them in the uh, normal conventional way. This is um, a bottle of nouveau glitter drops and it's called Blue Lagoon and I'm simply popping it onto the cardstock and rubbing it all over with a spatula and it is making my icicles all glittery and sparkly blue. So you can kind of see it there, it's uh, much more obvious in the close-ups and I'm going to do the same thing with the patterned paper icicles that will sit on top so they will have a lovely glittery sparkle to them as well. So already we are six minutes into the video and I've already ticked three things off of my recipe so I'm not doing bad. I'm going to have my icicles hanging down underneath my title and I didn't want to be able to see the top of the icicles behind the letters there so I've just trimmed them down slightly. Um, you probably can't see um, in the photo there but in my photograph I've got loads of sparkly icicles hanging down um, above my little boy's head so that cut file was perfect for this layout. And I'm also just adding the same Glitter Nouveau drops to my background just to add a bit of sparkle there as well. It kind of dries clear with coloured glitter so although it looks blue in the bottle um, it's the glitter that's blue more than the actual liquid itself so um, it doesn't discolour my background at all it just adds the glitter to it. And I'm just sticking my page down now to my border. I had to do a bit of surgery with this border uh, border, sorry, because I'd cut my cut file out and you might have seen at the beginning of the video I used my paper trimmer to just whip the top of that paper off and then went in with my scissors and then I decided I wanted to use it as my border so I had to do a bit of surgery and uh, stick it back into one piece so um, yeah, lesson learnt there and my little boy has come in playing with my cut file now He's learning his letters at the moment, so he's uh, <laughs> telling me what all the letters are, bless him. I had my photo printed off in two different sizes because I couldn't um, decide at the beginning which one I wanted to use, but I'm gonna go with the smaller one in the end because the larger one was just a bit too overpowering for the page and wouldn't have left any room for embellishment around it. So I'm just sticking my patterned paper icicles down to the cardstock ones and like I said I've offset them slightly just so it looks um, like it's giving it kind of a shadow effect. And then I'm just going to stick the icicles to the bottom of my cut file there so that I can move it as one piece. And you can kind of see how it's shimmering already. Um, like I said, it is much more obvious in the close-ups at the end. I'm going to use um, adhesive foam behind my cut file to pop it up off the page and add a bit of dimension. So I just took some time off camera there just to stick loads of um, 
off cuts and scrap pieces I've used. Um, I never waste any foam because you always need small pieces with cut files. So um, I've got a little drawer full of tiny off cuts. And now I'm just backing my photo. I've used the same navy blue basil textured card stock. And again, more um, distressing of the edges. So I'm using the blade of my scissors and running it along the card stock and that will just distress the edge and um, make it look a bit kind of fluffy and torn. And I do that pretty much on 99% of my layouts. It just adds a little bit more texture and interest to the page. And it just, it doesn't, it makes your edges look not so kind of sharp and flat. Um, I just really like the effect it gives. So I do that quite often. And this again is a patterned paper from the Echo Park Winter Magic collection. And again, I'm distressing the edges there. I've also torn one edge there just to add a bit more interest and texture to my layout. And I'm also going to ink the edges of this piece. And this is a distress ink and it's called Mermaid Lagoon. So I've just added a bit of ink to the edges there before sticking that down. And again, this pattern paper is from the Echo Park collection and I've just torn a strip there to go on the side. And then this is some cheesecloth. This is great for adding some more texture and interest to a layout. Um, it's really weird stuff to work with. It's kind of stretchy and odd um, and it really doesn't like double sided tape very much. So. Um, it's not the easiest thing to work with, but it does add a lovely texture. Um, and in the photo, like I said, we're in a winter wonderland and it, we were in the penguins party cabin or something it was called. And it was all dim blue lights with lots of um, fluffy snow sheets and things hanging. So that cheesecloth really reminded me of that. So that's why I've brought some of that onto the layout. And this is some, um, it's called Deco Web Ribbon. And I've bought this from um, a floristry shop uh, it's again another texture to the layout and it adds a bit more of a lighter blue colour. So I'm just adding a layer of that behind my photo. And I'll just trim the edges just so that they're not so um, straight cut. I just wanted them a bit kind of rough around the edges there. And this is some sequin waste. It's white and I'm just going to add a strip to the side there. And again, it's just about having lots of different textures um, on my layout. It's just, it makes it much more interesting. And every time you look at the layout, you notice something different about it, which I really like. I contemplated adding some pom-pom trim in, but decided that was just one step too far. So I uh, scrapped that idea. And now I'm going to add my uh, thread and stitching to my layout. So on the recipe, I've um, said you can either add thread as in like a thread cluster or do some hand stitching or machine stitching. Um, I'm happy with either. I am adding a border all around the outside edge of my page with um, silver thread. It's by We Are Memory Keepers and it's a silver metallic thread. So off camera, I've just hand stitched. So that now gives me two borders on my layout. I've got a patterned paper border and a hand stitched border. Um, and that is four of my recipe elements ticked off now with the thread added in. So I'm just going to stick my cut file down. I'm using a fine liner bottle with PVA glue in it. Sometimes I have to use my Nouveau drops if I've got a lot of mixed media because um, sometimes my PVA doesn't stick as well. But actually this one held quite well, I was quite surprised. And I've had to pop the top section of my photo up on foam. Um, I needed the bottom layer flat because the letters of the cards, uh, oh, sorry, of my cut file are already on foam. So um, the bottom of my photo had to just slot in underneath that. And I've just put a roll of tape there just to weigh it down a little bit and make sure it sticks. So uh, that's not going to be a permanent feature. 
And now I'm just coming in to think about how I want to embellish my layout a bit further. So I've pulled out um, a couple of flares from Dotty About Flare and I've also got a whole stack of Bramble Fox perspectives here. And I've got this gorgeous snowman pack which I absolutely love. They are frosted snowmen with gorgeous little details etched into them. We've got a lovely hat and a carrot nose and scarf and his buttons and face have all been etched in. Um, they come in a pack of four and they are so cute. I did contemplate adding some blue basil cardstock behind them just to um, make them a bit more noticeable on the page, but I didn't think I would be able to cut round it perfectly um, and make it look right, so I decided just to stick the snowmen down as they are. And my flare there, I've just embellished with a snowflake sticker just to add a bit more bling to that and I'm adding just a few more of those stickers to my background. And this is the fifth element off of my recipe list. I'm going to add some stars. And again, they are in the form of some Bramble Fox perspectives. Um, this is a little, um, I think they're called mini perspectives, and you get some white stars, some blue stars, and some silver glittered stars. So I'm just peeling the backing off of those and um, I think I add four in total. So I do two down um, under the W by my snowman and two up at the top there by the other snowman above the word walking. And I'm adding in some thread clusters as well. I've got one up the top there behind my snowman and the other one is going to go behind my flare badge. Um, again, adding more thread from the recipe. And this is my favourite thread to use. I've got it in both silver and gold. Um, it's by Wheel Memory Keepers and it's metallic and it's quite a wiry texture, so it's really easy to work with. Um, and it kind of stays in the position you put it in, which I really like. So it's quite nice to get some circular um, tangles from it. Just adding in a couple of bits from that Echo Park collection. So I've got the element sticker sheet where that little penguin is from. Um, almost added some ice skates dangling down from my icicles there, but decided I didn't like them. Um, and they got replaced with um, one of these fussy cut um, snow globes from one of the patterned papers. Um, and it's got a, uh, I think I've got a Christmas tree in it, this one. So just fussy cutting those. These scissors are my cutter bee scissors and they are the best thing I've found for fussy cutting. Um, everyone always says how they enjoy fussy cutting and I've always hated it. And I recently discovered it's because I've just been using rubbish scissors. Um, I treated myself to these recently and they've made a whole world of difference. So I'm just fussy cut three of those snow globes and I'm just scattering those around my layout. Actually, there might be four. I think I did four in the end. Now, these are some um, kind of card or chipboard stickers from um, a Chamel collection. I add one at the top there that says make a wish and another one at the bottom that says love. I'm adding another Bramble Fox perspective. This one is a snowflake and that's just something to pop in that gap there. And I'm also going to add another Frosty Cart Snow Globe next to it. I'm adding a little bit of foam behind my flare and just using some glossy accents to stick that down. I always use glossy accents for things like flares and um, acrylic perspectives. I find it just holds so much better than PVA glue. So it just, oh and my thread tangles as well I use it for. So I just add loads on the back and um, sometimes I have to apply weight to the perspectives. They don't always stick first time, especially on top of mixed media. Um, but once that glossy accent dries, it pretty much is dried fixed. Um, it's very hard to get things off the page once it's dried. So I'm just adding my next um, snow grave up at the top there with my little snowman.
And I think I'm almost done here. Um, I'm going to finish off adding some little sticky gems. So these are star shaped and I've got some in darker blue and turquoise. And I'm going to add a glittered blue um, gem to the center of my snowflake there. Um, so I've used Nouveau's and gems, both are on the um, recipe challenge. But because I'd used my Nouveau's in a kind of non-conventional way, I wanted to add some gems as well. And then just the last few bits here. So these are transparent stickers from an old CVS collection. Um, I think it was Boy's Rule. And then just a couple of other word stickers there that say breathtaking and magic. Um, and I think that is me done. Yep, it is. So here's the finished layout. Um, I'll leave you with the close-ups so that you can see all the lovely shimmer. Um, if you're not in the Pear Tree Cut Files Facebook group, please head over because we have a crop going all weekend. So there are loads of challenges all throughout the weekend. Um, I've got a schedule at the beginning of this video and I'll pop it in at the end as well so you can see what's going on. You'll need a Pear Tree Cut File for each of the challenges but they're all different so do head over and have a look um, and please remember to subscribe to my channel so thanks very much and i'll leave you with the close-ups have a good weekend